I want to ask you um, about the uh, the prospect of Indonesia counterterrorism measures because um, we got a lot of training and aid from Australia to train our detachment 88 and to uh, establish Indonesia's uh, counterterrorism agency. Do you think um, in the long term it still works for Indonesia? And if, if, if it doesn't work, then um, what is the implications for ASEAN and Australia? I think Indonesia's in a, uh, a very interesting transitional period where the original um, group of people that were arrested, um, guys like Abu Bakr Bashir, but, but others as well that were arrested early after 9-11, have mostly served their prison terms and have been released back into the community. And so we're seeing a sort of second wave of terrorism where people that were, actually it, there's two factors. One is people that were in jail are out now and are back and are organising. So there's a bit of a resurgence based on that. The other thing is that JI has been, Jama Islamiyah has been seen by others as becoming soft and being co-opted a little bit. And if we think about the origins of JI in Negara Islam Indonesia and the way that that splintered into different groups, you saw Mujahideen in Indonesia Timur and you saw um, Mujahideen Compaq and other groups emerge that sort of critiqued JI and said, you guys are, you're not real jihadists, you know, we, 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 we're the real thing. And so you get this more extreme fringe emerging of the jihadist set in, in Indonesia. And I think the other big transition, of course, as we talked about, is we're now talking about a truly democratic society with different police and military institutions than we had even a decade ago, and a different president who's got a different view and comes from being the mayor of Jakarta and has that kind of city level uh, view. I actually am, I have a lot of confidence that Indonesia is going to do well. Um, and I think the reason that I say that is because Indonesians have never sat back and expected other people to do things for them. They've always taken the lead themselves in thinking about how to, how to respond to the threat. And also because we're talking about a society where, you know, the strongest predictor of non-involvement in Islamic terrorism in Indonesia is belonging to an Islamic mass movement like NU, right? So there's very strong civil society, um, you know, community organizations that are a, a big resiliency factor in preventing uh, terrorism. Uh, I think that going forward, things like training uh, advocates and training uh, people in you know, evidence preservation and forensics and those kinds of things, kind of non-sexy behind the scenes kind of things, are going to be really important because that's about standing up a viable structure for the, um, for the law and order system in Indonesia. Mm -hmm.